Hi there, I'm Julia Leith, and I'm the pastor of Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for making a margin with us. Uh, I have my good friend and colleague here, Becky Santini. And what do you do for the church? I am the children's ministry director. She is awesome. If you haven't met her or seen one of her videos, I would really encourage you to uh, check it out. She's a, just got a servant's heart and does such a good job. Uh, we're excited that you were able to carve out a little bit of time in this midweek moment. And, and as you know, if you've been uh, um, attending with us or visiting with us these last many weeks, we've been looking at the Chronological Bible. And, and we pick, a, well, I pick my favorite verse from that particular te uh, text where we've been reading. And if you are doing that, we sure would love for you to continue to do that. If you haven't uh, had an opportunity to do that, you can uh, always hop on at any point. Don't worry about getting caught up. Just start where we are. And if it just seems like too much, if it seems overwhelming, then, then that's okay. Maybe uh, you might want to read, uh, start reading Matthew. We're looking at Matthew in our Sunday times together, and this week we're looking at Matthew 13. So you could read 12 chapters and be totally on time with us in uh, Matthew, or start this week in Matthew. But we really hope that you'll take some time to uh, be rooted in God's Word so that God can uh, transform every bit of you and every bit of us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, so we are uh, in the book of Isaiah tonight, and I'll ask you to uh, pull out your Bible. It's right in the middle of the Bible, and uh, uh, we've been in Isaiah for a little bit, and I, um, last week we talked about Hosea, uh, but uh, this week we're looking at Isaiah. And, and Isaiah, the first 39 or so chapters are really this kind of testament of God's power and might and strength. And there are just these images and verses, these first many chapters that, that are giving moments of hope and encouragement, uh, but there's a very strong tenet and, and tone of, of judgment and, um, and warning, you know, inviting God's people, saying, man, you, you are far, you know, make your path straight, come, come back to the Lord. And if you've been reading along, you'll remember that right at the end of chapter 39, there is this this prophecy and this promise to God's people that that they will be um, taken uh, under captivity by the Babylonians, who are you may remember their enemies, and, and so there's this moment of you know there's kind of some celebrations um, uh, and kind of what's going on in their day at that point, but then they they come to the end of chapter 39 and then there is this this promise that they're going to be living in exile. And you can imagine that that would be heartbreaking and discouraging you know they they're making dumb choices they're they're being disobedient they're falling away mm -hmm. from God but but here is this this uh, promise that that there are going to be consequences and so you can imagine at that point there is that moment when they feel far from God when they feel like things are not going the way that they want they feel like they're being punished in ways that that seem perhaps to some of them unreasonable uh, there is this moment you can imagine for these people when they feel like all hope is lost and they are far from God. And I wonder for you and for me, if you've had moments or seasons or even today at this moment, you feel far from God. And, and I wonder for you and for me, if there are moments and seasons and even right now where you feel like things aren't going the way that you think they should go. And you know that there are things that are coming down the pipe that seem unreasonably unfair. And I wonder if for you and for me, for all of us, this might be a moment of good hope and encouragement. Because if the text just stopped, if we just read those first 39 chapters, and we said, man, we're making dumb choices and God's people are, are disobeying him, then that would be a perfectly fine story. We'd understand that. We made bad choices. God punished his people. And, and there you have it. You know, you kind of you get what you deserve, right? Isn't, isn't that seem like it would be reasonable? And yet that's not, in fact, how the story ends. That's not how the whole of the story of God's uh, narrative, this great love story for all of us. And, and so much of the time when we're reading, it's just this preparation, this invitation of, of, of uh, God's faithfulness, that he's showing who he is before uh, people might meet Jesus. So that when people hear these stories, when people read these stories, and, and for the Israelites at that time, when they were living through that, uh, the consequences of their choice and the consequences and the results of their actions, uh, and then and then sometime later, people hear those stories and then they meet Jesus and they say, ah, oh, 
this is where it all changes. And so here is his preparation that, that the story of God's faithfulness to God's people, the story of God's provision to God's people is much bigger than whatever, albeit very important, we may be facing today. And so having said all that, there is this moment here where the Israelites are looking uh, ahead with trepidation, knowing that things are not going to go exactly as they'd hoped. And then at verse uh, 40, there is a, a shift where we go from promises of hope and provision with lots of warning and, uh, and uh, consequences, right? Judgment and consequences. And then here at this point, there's a shift where it moves more from the consequences to the hope and the promise. And so God's word is speaking to the Israelites, and my hope is that God's word right now is speaking to you and to me. So Isaiah 40, uh, verse 21 to 26, where God is revealed in his power and might. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, no one is missing. So here is this shift, right? We see that God's people are far from God, but God is a holy God, so big, so powerful, so mighty that he's above everything, that everything just scatters below him. And why is that important? Because there is this shift where this faraway God, this God who provides but is also giving judgment, is going to shift in a really tangible way, uh, at least through their experience. It's been his intent the whole time to give his power and strength and might to those who are weak. It's not just charity. It's not just him doing a, a good turn for his people. It, it is really about this uh, reminder of, of God meeting his people where they're at. And he meets people who understand that they are far from him. He, he meets people and blesses people who understand that they cannot do it on their own. And so here's the rest of the text in 27 to 31. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator at the, of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall feel exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So here are these pictures, right, of, of the youth. And I don't know how, how you feel, but sometimes I'm reminded just how, how not young I am. Amen? Maybe you are too. Some days you feel a little less young. But you remember what it's like when you were young and you thought you had the world by, your, by the tail? Remember when you thought you could do anything? Uh, he's not just talking about the young in that way. He's talking about the people who are immature in their faith, who think that they don't really need God. And, and so uh, we've seen those people. Maybe we've been those people. Lord knows I've been those people. Uh, but here is this reminder that he says that even though people think they're strong, they will fail. But when we know that we need God, God will be there. And then it says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And what an encouragement that is. But I don't, I don't know about you, but there have been plenty of times when I've been waiting on the Lord and I'm like, anytime you're ready, God. Like one of my consistent prayers throughout my entire life of faith. And I, I wish it was more dignified because, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor. I should say things 
gracefully. <laughs> but a regular prayer for me, and maybe it's been for you, is throw me a bone, God. I need some help. And it's never like mm-hmm. that coming before the Lord. It's like an agitated, frustrated, bone-tired person. Me, going before God, going, I'm waiting for mm-hmm. you, and I don't feel refreshed. I'm waiting for you, and I don't understand why it's taking so long. I'm waiting for you, and I'm still so tired. And maybe you're in that season right now. Maybe you're in that space right now. I wonder if this word could be for you. He says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. See, that waiting is not touching our our watch. It's not shaking our fists. It's not sitting passively, like just throwing, you know, kind of caution the wind going, well, whenever God gets around it. Now, when we wait patiently on the Lord, it's an active, responsive intentionality. It's when we're waiting patiently on the Lord, we are going into Scripture looking for God's faithfulness. When we are waiting patiently on the Lord, we are going to our friends saying, man, I need you to pray for me. I need you to speak word to me. I need you to be, to be reminding me of the truth. It, it is seeking Him out and relying on Him. And if you haven't been doing that, today is the day to change that posture. If you haven't been reading your scripture, start reading today. One one little chapter, read Isaiah 40 from beginning to end. But when we, those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. And then there are these beautiful pictures of what we can aspire to. They shall mount up like eagles. And remember, this picture is what God is trying to reveal to us. See, God's not trying to hide and make things so complicated. What what he's saying is, you're important to me. Come into relationship with me. What he's saying is, no matter where you are, no matter how far you are, come back to me. What he's saying, even if you're tired, even if you're discouraged, even if your heart is breaking and your life is falling apart, come back to me and I will give you rest. There is this promise, and, and, you, and we've all seen birds, right? Especially those really big birds when they fly, they just have to kind of move their wings up, and then they just go because they're doing exactly what they've been created to do. And, it, and it's an mm-hmm. easy work. That's how it's supposed to be for us. Like the world may be going crazy and our lives may be falling apart, but as we are in presence of the Lord, that should be easy. It says they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fall. Because the purpose is not just to kind of stay here in our little bubble or cocoon and go, thank goodness the Lord loves me and he does love you. And he does love me and he does love you. And he loves Brad especially. But it's, it's, it's this purpose to receive and then to also be moving forward. Because God has the things for you, for you to experience his grace and to remind people of his grace. And then Isaiah, at the end of it, it says the weak, in Isaiah 40 and 20, 29 and 30, that weak and faint, if you go back and reread that, those are the same words. It's failure because of a loss of strength. And weary in Isaiah 40, 30, is a different word. It sounds like it's the same word, but it's a different word. It's exhaustion because of the hardness of life. And so for me and for you, this is the good encouragement. That if you're tired because you've used everything you can and you just don't have anything more to give, or you're tired because life has been giving you a good run and you've really struggled and things are going in a different way than you, than you expected, Uh, either of those things that is a reminder that God is there for us. That God will be with us no matter what. And and so if you find yourself right now in this season where you're like, I just need a little bit of hope. I just need a little bit of positivity. I just need a good turn. This is a word for you. And I'm going to ask you, dear ones, as you uh, uh, go throughout this week, that you would read this verse, chapter 40, Isaiah 40, verses 27 to 30, that you would read that every day when you start the day so that you might see afresh how good God is. Let me pray for you. 
God, we're grateful for your mercy and the ways that you show yourself to us. We pray that more and more you would remind us of your call in our life. Just the opportunity we have to give you thanks, we do. And we pray, God, that you would open your word for us afresh. So grateful for uh, just the opportunity to come together to make a margin that we might see you. And so we pray with confidence in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Oh, we're so glad that Becky is here. She's a, one of my dearest friends here and just really a blessing. I mean, I, I joke, but if you don't know her, she's really, really a blessing to so many. And, and Becky's going to share with you a little bit about herself and kind of what God's uh, done and is doing. And um, we just thought it'd be nice to be able to hear some of the stories of our, our church people. Yeah. Um, so if you know me, you know that I'm the children's ministry director at the church. But before that, I was a teacher. Um, I taught at a local school here in um, Vacaville for 10 years. Um, and before I became the children's ministry director, um, I guess we should even go back before that. Before I got married even, my husband and I, well, then, uh, fiance and I, we helped move my grandmother from Washington to Vacaville mm -hmm. to be closer to family. And church has always been a very important part of her life. And so we made sure that she was attending church, uh, which my mother would take her to quite regularly. Mm -hmm. and every once in a while, my mom would be unable to attend, and so we would take her to church. Uh, and that's how we got connected with Covenant Community mm -hmm. Church, was through my grandmother and my mom. Um, and when Nick and I started a family, we decided that it was extremely important to us that we raise a family in a church. We wanted them to be part of a uh, faith-filled environment. And so um, I, was, I was personally not baptized until we had Morgan baptized. So Morgan, I didn't know that. Yes. Morgan and I were baptized on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, she's 16 now, so it's been about 16 years. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that's when the church was meeting at the um, Ulatis Community okay. Center. So um, that's when we started attending. We were pretty, we were very faithful attenders at that point. And then um, the church eventually moved into the building where it is now. And um, we had a great children's ministry director. And uh, times changed, and she was moving on, and we were trying to hire a new children's ministry director. And at that same time, Nick and I were having our fourth, fourth child, um, and as a full-time teacher and him as a full-time firefighter, it was um, a big stretch for us to add in a fourth child. Um, it was not something that we had planned. Definitely a God thing, for sure a God thing, because he and I had both said, we're all done. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had our three, mm -hmm. we're all done, and God knew differently. He had different plans for us. So... I decided to take a leave of absence from my teaching job um, because I felt like there was no way with mm -hmm. four kids under the age of five, there was no way I was going to be able to <laughs> keep my sanity, keep teaching, being nice to other people's kids, and then come home and be nice to my own kids. So um, I took a leave of absence from what I felt was my most important job, um, what I had always thought. I, that's how I defined myself. I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this position came open at the church. Um, I did not feel like I was at all qualified. Um, and there was a handful of people around me who in, told me differently that, no, this is perfect place for you. You need to apply for this job. This is great for you. And here I am. It's 10 years later and I am still the children's ministry director at the church. Um, God knew exactly what he was doing. God knew when we helped move my grandmother here and we started attending the church. He knew exactly where I was going to be 16 years later, sitting right here in Julia's house, making this recording. Mm -hmm. um, even though I dug in my heels, I always know better. In my opinion, I always know better. But uh, God shows differently that he knows what he wants for us. Um, I resigned from my teaching position and I took on a full-time position at the church feeling completely and totally unqualified. Mm -hmm. um, 
But through it all, um, my faith has grown tremendously. I have created deeper relationships with people who um, are very important to me. Um, spend more time with my family, which uh, is exactly, I think, where God wants me to be. Um, I, it's, yeah, it's been great. Mm -hmm. So um, I absolutely love what I do. I love the connections with families, with the kids here at the church. Um, I definitely miss everyone with um, all the stay-at-home yeah. orders. It's been really, really hard yeah. um, to stay connected with people. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's hard on families. And just know that God, God knows exactly what he's doing. He is extremely faithful. And he will continue to give you that strength that you need. There's plenty of days where I feel like, okay, God... What, what now? And then something will just cross my path and I'll go, oh, so if we weren't here in this moment right now because of COVID, because of a stay-at-home order, we would not have experienced yeah. that. Um, God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us, but we have to remember that um, he really, he knows everything. Yeah. So. And you know what I like so much about that, Becky? You know, two things, right? When you were trying to decide if you wanted to apply for the job and you're like, oh, no, I can't do this. Right. You had people, godly people, who yes. said, no, I think God could be calling mm -hmm. you to this, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and so that's like a huge shift where you went from like your identity being the teacher mm -hmm. and then you make this huge shift into being yes. a director of children's ministry, yeah. right? And then now we're kind of in this weird season mm -hmm. where you say... All right, God, I don't know what's going on, but what now? Mm -hmm. And then something will come by. So you're you're waiting upon the Lord yes. at, in really crucial ways throughout mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. And and here you are sitting on my couch as a result of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. God works it all out, you know. He does. And and I think that's such a it's such a good posture and such a good modeling because um, sometimes there are like really big decisions, like should I go this way or this mm -hmm. way? And God brings people along just mm -hmm. like like they did for you. Yep. And sometimes there's like this internal pull and you go, this is right. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's kind of small things, right? We wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. in big ways and small ways. Mm -hmm. But when we do that, God gets us to where we're supposed to be going. Mm -hmm. And and I know from all the, I mean, I've been here near five years now. And I have just seen how Becky has poured into our families and our community. How she has, through the power of the Holy Spirit, changed people's lives. And so... Her waiting upon the Lord has made this huge kingdom impact. Uh, I know for me in my life, and I see it in the church. And so, I, I just I hope that that's a an encouragement for you as you're trying to figure out how to wait upon the Lord, mm -hmm. how you're trying to figure out what God is doing in the midst of this season. And and I hope that you will, as I invited you, be reading Isaiah 40, uh, 27 to 30 every day this week until I. See you next week. But uh, I'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. as we make a margin for the Lord. And always on Sunday morning at 9.30, we hope that you'll worship with us as we Facebook live stream. But I hope you have a great week, and God bless you. Thanks so much.